Hello and welcome back to another video and welcome back to another 70 mile per hour highway efficiency test. Essentially, this is where we check to see how efficient the car is and how far the car goes on a charge. Today's subject is a Ford Mustang Mach-E extended range rear wheel drive with aero wheels known as the California Route 1 Edition. This is the version of the Mustang that gets 300 miles EPA and today we're gonna see what it does at 70 miles per hour constant in our loop style test starting and ending here in somewhere Colorado. Should be a blast. You join us here in Fort Morgan, Colorado, where we are performing a DC fast charge on the Mustang. We're gonna bring it up to 100% state of charge as we do with all of our range tests. The reason I DC charge the car to 100% is to make sure the battery's at optimal conditions and temperatures, and so that we can kind of have a good comparative basis across all of the EVs that we test. What we'll be doing in this test is we're gonna be running the car at 70 miles per hour. We're just off the highway on the other side of this little barrier here it's of less than a mile on there and then we will be turning around around the halfway mark and coming back here and pulling in with the car completely dead some testing procedures for this day today go as follows again leaving a hundred percent state of charge we're going to be going up on the highway loop style there is a little bit of wind it's about a 10 mile per hour crosswind gust about a four mile per hour constant it shouldn't affect the results too much what is going to be a little bit uh, affecting of the results are two different things. The first is temperature. We're right up on that 100 degree mark today. Real nice and toasty. What I'm going to be doing is cooling down the cabin before we head off. In the winter time, we warm everything up. In the summertime, we cool everything down. And by doing this, it means we don't have to have a huge energy spend to pull down the cabin air temperature when we unplug. Basically, it's not to get the car more range, it's just to make the test more consistent with how I normally do these tests, and Tom does on this channel as well. So, tire pressures have been set to manufacturer suggested pressures as always. Once this car completes at 100%, we're gonna unplug and head out immediately. We don't wanna give it any time to draw any power down. We leave as soon as they complete, when it comes back here, we're gonna have it with zero miles on the dash for sure, and uh, we'll see how much power cut there is. Should be pretty interesting. I'm excited to see how the Mach-E does in our 70 mile per hour highway range test here with the perfect spec for range. The Mach-E X for extended range has a 99 kilowatt hour battery pack, but only 88 kilowatt hours of that 99 installed capacity is actually usable. That means that the battery should last a really long time if you charge it up and let it drain because there's such a big buffer. Now this car does support over the air updates, so we'll see how that battery pack is managed into the future. And of course, on our weekly Inside EVs podcast, we've spoken at length about the software and coding of this drivetrain and uh, battery pack software. What we're going to be doing today, of course, is going on a range test. So we're just about to complete charging. We're going to jump in the car, head east into Nebraska from Colorado out of Fort Morgan and then end here. Can't wait, should be a blast. The other thing to mention about this Mach-E is it's not a totally fresh car. This is actually one of the higher mileage Mach-E's in the country right now. This one has almost 9,000 miles on it. And I'm sure they've not been crazy easy miles either. This has been a media vehicle that journalists have been driving for some time. So you know it's been shredded up a canyon road or two, potentially a track. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind here with the battery pack that it's not a totally totally fresh car not to make any excuses but it's important to understand if we're testing a brand new out of the box zero mile ev or one that has you know six seven eight thousand miles of pretty hard abuse so let's uh let's see what the results are but it is something to keep in mind looks like we just completed at 100 percent state of charge i've cooled the cabin down just turned off air conditioning while we go through this unplugging process yes there we go so the car is not pulling any power we'll kick it back on we're gonna be running this car in whisper mode. Whisper mode should use a little bit less power in theory just by dulling the accelerator pedal a little bit. There's three driving modes on Mach-E. Whisper, engage, and unbridled. Of course, we're gonna keep it out of unbridled for this test. Whisper mode drives pretty much the same if I'm honest. Let's reset our trip calculation. Car on, into reverse. Let's not hit that person. <laughs> Interesting, it did set off the rear cross traffic alert. And we are gonna be off to, 
I don't know. We'll probably make it into Nebraska for a bit. And when we start reaching the 60% state of charge mark, then we will head back and turn down this way. So let's rock and roll. Forgive the screen from blinking throughout this video. That's just a weird refresh rate with my camera. The screen in person is beautiful and actually looks just fine. Um, the Mach-E uses a guessometer range calculation, which means this 285 miles predicted at 100% state of charge is actually based off of previous driving history. Uh, we'll see how that adjusts throughout, but it's different than Tesla's mode, which is a rated range calculation. In theory, this will adapt to your driving, although there's pluses and minuses to both a rated range or guessometer range calculation. The Mach-E uses this guessometer function. Let's get us up to 70 mile per hour, GPS accurate. Once we get up to 70, we're gonna put on Copilot 360. So let's inch up to speed here, 68, 69, 70. Getting coal rolled there. <laughs> and let's see, lane keeping system on. The blue bubble means it is actually steering for us and we are good to go. I'm gonna confirm that 70 is GPS 70 and we'll be on this road for hours to come. Well, it's a toasty one out there. Car is reporting 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is a hot weather range test. Uh, hot weather doesn't affect EVs as much as cold weather. Uh, but now that we kind of have everything leveled out with battery temps, with cabin temps, either way, plus or minus a few percent here. Uh, the big reason EVs get such little range in the winter time uh, has to do with that initial charge, that initial leaving the driveway. Let me use all that power to warm everything up. Once they're warmed up and the battery's toasty, you get full usable capacity and it doesn't really have to work that hard. So you do get less EV range in the winter for the first few miles, but then after that, it's not not too different in my experience. I've had a lot of winter EV experience. Uh, Mach-E cruising at 69 miles per hour indicated is a true 70 mile per hour GPS. In this particular car, each car has little variances with different wheel and tire size, but at least here we're gonna be running the test at an indicated 69 miles per hour, which is a GPS accurate 70 miles per hour. I'm really looking forward to seeing what this car can do. We're gonna crank up the tunes a little bit, enjoy the comfort and quietness of Mach-E. Is one of this car's best abilities is on a road trip just being so serene so solidly built I totally enjoy spending time in this car and with plug-in charge at Electrify America now and actually working and tested this thing is a charging monster it's no problem pull up to a charger charge it up to 80% and you have big range to get to the next one so really enjoying this thing we're down to 98% state of charge 280 miles estimated uh, with the guesso meter and that will fluctuate for the first little bit looking forward to seeing what it'll do we are at 90% state of charge. We just dipped from 91 down to 90. So we're on the high side of 90 and we've already traveled 29.6 miles, 29.7. So that means in theory, we could just move the decimal over and we'd get 298 miles on a charge. Who knows? We have a lot of ground left to cover. We have a lot of wind variances. This is why we run a loop style test. If we have a tailwind one way, we get a headwind the other. Although I believe we actually have a bit of a headwind going this way. We'll have to see for sure. Elevations can change, but uh, either way, all this is really letting me know at this point is that we're going to be in the car for a really long time. Definitely until after dark. <laughs> time to lock in and prepare for a long one, folks. So, um, yeah, I'll update you when we get around 75% state of charge. I mentioned I would check in with you at 75% and we are at 74%. Must have missed when it clicked down. 82.6 miles under our belt. I think we've lost a couple hundred feet of elevation when we make the loop. I imagine we'll be a little bit less efficient. Right now we're doing 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, which is unbelievably efficient here in the rear wheel drive with aero wheel configuration. The Mach-E is seriously efficient considering the speed 70 miles per hour that we're going. Uh, really, truly impressed here. Uh, conditions are great. We're down to 92 degrees Fahrenheit. Sun setting off in the distance. This is going to be a pretty great uh, pretty great trip. And but what I mean by setting is I think it's just behind clouds. It's only 6, 12 p.m. It should set around 8.30. So, oh, the sun's up above me in the clouds. Yep, there we go. <laughs> Don't listen to me. Uh, 211 miles predicted left on the range calculations. And uh, let's see if we lose some efficiency heading back the other way. But for now, we're just going to continue pressing on east into Nebraska. 
Well, according to the Mustang up here and some signs that we saw, it looks like the road is actually closed and they're putting everyone onto back roads. So I think at about, let's see, how many miles? 95 miles up here. Um, we're gonna take this exit, loop back the other way, and then uh, see how it goes, ID4. So we got a near 100 mile solid run heading up this way. Looks like the highway's closed up ahead. Gonna make a loop and a couple left turns, no traffic lights. This should be pretty quick. Regen slowing us down nicely here. And uh, again, the screen is not flashing like that in real life. That is just a function of the camera display here. And a couple left turns and we'll be back on the road, heading back the way we came. What I'm gonna be looking for on this particular stretch is because we're gonna gain a few hundred feet of elevation, how will our efficiency fare? 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour is stellar right now, but will that drop as we head the other way? We do, again, have a side wind in both directions, so let's find out how it goes, merging up onto the highway. It's so quiet, merging up. <laughs> you can barely hear, especially in the rear wheel drive form, any sort of electric motor whine because there's no motor on the front axle. So it's pretty much silent acceleration, truly silent acceleration, pretty neat. 50% update, we're halfway through the trip, two hours and 12 minutes in, we've traveled 148.6 miles. We've been driving back in the other direction for about 50 miles now, and our miles per kilowatt hour is still 3.7. This thing's crazy efficient. That increase in, in elevation that we've been going on, again, minor difference here, a couple hundred, or a couple hundred feet, yeah, over 150 miles or 100 miles or so, uh, doesn't seem to be making too much of a difference. The car is predicting another 145 miles until it's out. It's going to be very close to 300 miles. I don't think it'll hit 300 miles at this point. Um, again, we'll have to wait and see, but Again, 300 miles EPA rating is a mix of city highway, like all cars. And if it can come even marginally close on the highway, that would be impressive in and it of itself, just like most cars we test. So let's continue on for another bit. We're heading back the other way. There's been like 30 police cars going that way. So we may try to continue onwards over towards the Denver side on the other side of Fort Morgan and then loop back up to Fort Morgan on the other side rather than staying on the uh, eastern side. We'll just continue past where we started to the west. What really matters is that we start and end in the same location. See you there. Wow, look at how beautiful that sky is. That is something truly magical coming back here to Fort Morgan. The Mustang being a very comfortable, easy to ride in car. Take a look at the interior, quite large throughout. You can see this awesome glass roof overhead. Absolutely beautiful and a great car with a great view off in the distance. Absolutely loving it. Take a look, a brother, a Mustang, I guess coupe, in this case a convertible, motoring past. We are now at 25% state of charge with a bit of an issue. So far we've traveled 218 miles. We have 38 miles if I loop back and the car is projecting 73 miles of range. However, my phone just went crazy because of a severe weather advisory. Now I'm not sure if that will affect us, but I can already feel a little bit of wind hitting us a little bit harder. So I think I'm gonna take the car's advice, exit here in 4.5 miles. We're gonna loop back to the charger. Again, I've passed it. We're on our way closer to Denver. We're gonna go back up this road and then um, loop around closer up that way. I don't know if it'll affect results yet. So far, I would say no, weather's fine beautiful sunset, couldn't ask for anything better, but at least at this point, better uh, to get up back down or uh, get back to the EA charger in Fort Morgan, and we can play around that way to run this thing out to zero. But so far, incredible showing, 220 miles in, and uh, no sign of giving up anytime soon. We have 25% state of charge remaining. Man, does this thing just go on and on and on forever. Approaching our exit up ahead, let's take it off of Copilot 360, which is Mustang Mach-E's lane centering function. Man, did it work perfectly on this road uh, for this range test. Hasn't even had a hiccup once. Gotta say, very impressive, especially with the sun at such a low angle. I tested Mach-E a while ago and noticed with sun at a low angle, it would freak the system out, but I have not experienced that today 
uh, and I don't expect to on the way back with the sun at our backs. One pedal driving, pulling us down to a stop here at zero. Beautiful landscape here, and again, just about an hour up the road this way are some of the most gorgeous mountain views you can find. Whoa, check this out. This is kind of freaky. <laughs> what are we supposed to do here? Just go through, and then how do we get back on the highway? Hey, thanks so much, appreciate that. Got a little cattle guard right here. What in the world? Where are we? <laughs> this is Eastern Colorado. A lot of people think of Colorado as just mountains, but uh, here to tell you that's definitely not the case. We have uh, trikes and train tracks and grasslands and grain holder things. And I guess this is the way back onto the highway. Yep, that has gotta be one of the weirdest <laughs> road exchanges I've ever been on. Check this out. We're cruising along here on this road right next to the highway, but it, I don't know when they intersect back in. Either way, no traffic, perfect conditions, and this road might be a little bumpier, but getting the job done just as well as the highway would. <laughs> I don't know why they have a secondary road here, a frontage road, if you will, that I think, according to the map, leads to nowhere except merging back onto the highway way off in the distance. Well, we got super lucky with this storm, maybe just a hint of drizzle, but for the most part, this worked out great. We are pulling off the highway here. We have nine miles projected, 3% state of charge. We've driven 274.8 miles, 0.9 miles. There we go, right when I come off uh, 70 miles an hour. So nears makes no difference, 275 miles on the highway. Now we're gonna try and drive as close to 70 miles per hour as we can on the back roads, and then we will head back to the Electrify America charging station and plug this thing in when it is completely out of juice. So off we go to some back roads. We're gonna pass Walmart here on the left, and there's good country roads where we can carry, you know, good 55 plus mile an hour speed and we'll loop back around and end right at that green glow over on the left-hand side. Not sure if you can see it that well or not, but that is our ending point. Through the intersection we go, and let's get the speeds up to something reasonable. We have hit 0% with two miles projected. It says chargers are unreachable. Well, we'll see about that. We're taking another extra loop. I found this great loop full of rights on these 45 mile an hour roads. The winds are picking up massively and um, pretty insane weather conditions. A friend is over at Walmart waiting for me at the EA stations to complete this. And he said that the chargers have been uh, going on and off due to a power outage, which is honestly, I think the first or second time in my many hundreds of thousands of miles of driving EVs I've ever had to worry about that. But hey, we like to live life on the edge here. 0% big storm living the dream. You guys know I love this stuff just makes it more and more exciting. So this will probably be our last loop two miles projected. I think we are, uh, yeah, charger distance uh, critical, blah, blah, blah. Don't tell me what to do. Let's head back over to the Walmart and uh, plug this thing in. We should be completely out by then. There's no power meter on the Mustang to no available power, but so far driving around normally like this, we'll just take one street a little early here. Uh, I haven't noticed any noticeable power degradation. And part of that's just because of that huge buffer this car has. It can still sustain a pretty good performance figure all the way down to where it will cut power at zero. Uh, two miles projected though here on the screen still means there's power left to be taken out of this battery pack and we're not gonna stop until everything is completely out. The Mustang says depleted battery, stop safely now. But why are you showing me one mile of range if it's fully depleted? Anyway, just on the other side of this traffic light are the Electrify America chargers. I still seem to have power when I put my foot down, but let's at least get into the Walmart parking lot and then uh, make sure everything's zeroed out before we call it call our range test. You guys know how I like to do it. We like to get a proper test here. So looking left, looking right, hoping we can get across the intersection. <laughs> it's weekend, very gentle on acceleration. One thing you guys need to know is when you do these EV range tests, when the batteries get very low, you need to be very conscious about your power application on the accelerator pedal. Any big, huge throttle movements can, yep, chargers are up and running, that's great. Any big, huge power movements can really just pull pack voltage and 
I don't really know what the, what would happen in the case of the Mach-E, but in other vehicles, some of them just completely shut off. This is one of the longest range tests I've personally ever done. I think the longest I've done was Tycon, but this is right up there and it has, uh, yeah, smaller battery pack. So let's see, actually, is it smaller battery pack? Don't know about that, but let's get this thing charging. Zero miles, zero percent, depleted battery, start charging now. And the thing that says charger is unreachable. Well, open your eyes, Maki. We are here. That charger may not have recovered from the power outage, but it looks like this one has. So let's plug that one in and we will be good to go. And to charge the Maki, this is one of the best parts. All you have to do is plug it in. It will do all the communication with the Electrify America charger and then it will automatically start charging. Really impressed with the range, the size. I really like the Maki in white as well. And these arrow wheels are pretty neat. This might be the version of Maki to get if you'd love to go on road trips. And just like that, plugging in, charging has started 0%. We're gonna let this thing charge up enough to get home. I'll full charge it tonight, of course, on my, my level two charger at home in the garage. Man, this range test just went on for a long time. Now I have to say, I think we probably could have got another, let's just say five miles, four miles maybe, right at the end when the wind started picking up. Uh, I think it's a very accurate range test. 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, extremely efficient for this size of car. And overall, a very impressive test. I mean, for the most part, Maki -E on a road trip, you're charging it to 80%. So you're going to get a solid 240 miles in between chargers. That's quite a bit if you just cruise around at 70 miles an hour. Very impressive. We're already gained three miles of range just in this short clip. Oh, four miles of range, just like that. Pretty impressive charging speeds here. When the pack is low and you first start charging, this thing rips. So thanks for joining me for another Inside EVs Highway Range Test. 287.4 miles here in the Mustang Mach-E California Route 1 Edition. See you on the next one.